Here's what's wrong. How many situations have you been in where you could say that you liked everybody in the group you were leading? If you have a group of two people, then you might expect that you will like both of them. However, most of us are charged with the responsibility of leading a larger group. If you're a sales manager and you take over a sales force of 10, the odds of not liking at least one person in that group are much greater. Let's also hypothesize that the one person you do not like, for whatever reason, is also the top salesperson in the group and has the highest customer loyalty. <laughs> in addition, that person has the best relationship with the manufacturing division and has always had the highest peer group ratings as well. At this point, you might say, if this person is that good, then obviously I would like her. Indeed, that might be true, but the opposite happens frequently as well. You can have a top performer you truly dislike. If you have been a leader for any period of time, you have been in that situation and probably have struggled with the consequences. If liking is a requirement of good leadership, how can you lead this person? By that definition, you cannot. So what do you do? Your dislike usually becomes a barrier to communications. If you do not like a person, it is very difficult to hide your dislike. The other person will sense how you feel and begin to react negatively to you as well. Slowly, you begin to distance yourself from each other in an effort to avoid the undesirable contact. Worse still, you will invariably become overly critical of the person. Eventually, these tensions will result in either termination or transfer of the subordinate. Bias wins every time. 